What up guys? It's two in the afternoon. It's nap time for my baby. Time for a little afternoon delight. Some rum, some reviews, and hope you enjoy. Let's get to it. Gonna find my baby, gonna hold her tight, gonna grab some afternoon delight. My motto's always been when it's right, it's right. Why wait until the middle of a cold dark night? Wait. All right, guys, so I already shot this once, but I felt like I wasn't really being honest because I had just started drinking my rum. So I've now finished my first glass of rum. I'm on to my second, and I figure I can be a lot more honest and real with you guys about how I felt about the books this week. I had a fat stack, guys. I had eight books come out this week, which was like 30 bucks. Uh, luckily, only two of them were $3.99, so that helps a bit. And they were all solid, so I enjoyed them all, so I have not much to complain about. Let's start with Batman, number 29. Uh, back from the hiatus after the uh, Batman Eternal preview, and I was a little confused, like I'm sure a lot of you were, because this is already kind of a convoluted story, and then you have a break for a month, and then you're like, what the fuck happened last time? I don't remember. I think something with the Riddler... And there was a Dark City event type thing. The city, Is the power still off? So I was a little confused. I had to go back and check it out. But uh, I read it, I read it through twice. And it is a really good book. Um, so I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, Bat if Dark Knight Rises, that movie. I read I watched it two or three times. And I loved it every time more. Because I got more out of it each time I watched it. Where some like The Avengers I liked less. Because it's like... I noticed more flaws with it the the more I watched it. So there's two ways of looking at things, I guess. Should it should it be like really good when you first read it the one time, or is it better to have something that's a little more in depth, but maybe takes two or three times to go through the content to really uh, get the full intention of the writer or creator or whatever. I th I go I lean more towards this where I'd rather have something be a little too smart for me and my drunk ass than. Uh, too dumb, if that makes sense, or too shallow. So, really good book. This is a $4.99 book, guys, because uh, it's a little longer, and it's pretty epic. Like, it, it has the epic showdown between Batman and Dr. Death, finally, and it doesn't really disappoint. Uh, great fight scene. I always like when the, the hero can find a creative way to beat the, uh, the villain, and I think he does in this. Um, awesome move by the Riddler too. I'm not going to show you what it does to on on Jim Gordon. You guys got to see that. That's sweet, beautiful art. We got this pink lightning going over the dark city. There, I'm going to pull this out because it's that good. Capullo, man, the guy is killing it here. Like, look at this, just dangerous killer storm happening. You got Batmo Blimp out there kicking ass and Batman. Just trying to do what he can. We see a little flash of a young Harper Rowe and her brother there. Um, there was... Let's see if I can find it really quick. This panel here... I swear I saw like the face of Batman in that panel. And I can't find it now. But it kind of looks like if you look up on the two eyes... It looks like uh, Batman sort of watching over the city from the sky here. And then that would mirror up with this. So I don't know if you guys saw that. Take a look if you got this book. Tell me if you, if you agree. But... I couldn't find it after, so I, I when I first saw it, I was like, "Whoa, that's cool," and it was maybe it was just a fluke, but great read uh, there on that Batman. There was a little bit too much monologuing. Um, there was sort of Scott Snyder put in a monologue from with uh, Doctor Death talking to Batman as they're fighting. Batman sort of stops him in the moment and goes to deal with the problem at hand, and. He has a whole nother monologue, and I'm like, I just heard him monologue for like two or three pages. I don't really want to get into another story about a song that his dad had listened to and the true meaning. Like, it seemed like he had, he, Snyder had like two really good ideas, and he just didn't want to drop one out of there, but it was a bit much. But besides that, great book, beautiful art, guys. There's some pages in there that you're like, like, wow, like just jaw-droppingly cool. So I don't want to spoil anything. Go buy it. It's worth that $4.99 price tag. Uh, Superior Spider-Man, number nine? Number nine. Or not Superior Spider-Man. I'm not reading that shit. Um, this is Superior Foes of Spider-Man. And this is climbing to the top of my favorites right now. Man, it is so funny. 
uh, just the ragtag dumb criminals backstabbing, being mean to each other, uh, throwing each other under the bus, creatively like ruthless. It's hilarious. Uh, there's an awesome scene where it looks like Boomerang's going to do this killer kick-ass move and it just blows up in his face and doesn't work at all. And it's just how things go for villains, right? So they've talked about doing like a Sinister Six movie. This would be the movie if I was going to do Sinister Six. This would be something I would be interested in. I don't want to see a bunch of like brooding evil, like the legitimate villains. Like that's no fun. Man, this is what I want to see is the dumb idiots uh, screwing each other over, being scumbags. Uh, just everything's in the moment. They're just day to day trying to survive, trying to hustle. And that's what criminals are like. Like if you guys have known friends or anything or just these dumb criminal types, that's how they act. And they're just idiots and it's hilarious. So pick it up. I heard that book's going to $3.99, which annoys me, but I'm going to keep reading it because Nick Spencer is freaking hilarious. Another funny book, uh, Deadpool 25.1. Uh, it says up there, I think tacos are number one. Kind of giving a little shot at Marvel and the stupidity of this whole point one thing, I think. Um, good book. Like, it doesn't really have a lot happen in terms of the story. It's just a funny fight with him and Crossbones. And at the end, he decides he's off to Europe. So going in that direction. Um, not too much to say about it. Uh, it was funny. It was silly. Uh, not their best work, I don't think. But it was good. What else? East of West, number 10. Holy shit, guys. This is getting good. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it's just a beautiful book, for one. Every issue is so, like, gorgeous. And um, awesome stuff happening. We had a sweet showdown. Death is trying to hunt down his son. That's his son here, who we've sort of seen as this trapped mutilated victim who maybe has a little more power than we knew he's a bigger deal than he thought everyone thinks he's one person the beast who's supposed to rise up and cause a whole bunch of ruckus uh in the prophecy but clearly he might be somebody else awesome fight seem to get a little more backstory between uh death's companions that raven and the wolf so beautiful little um experience there and my favorite character so far in this series has returned. This guy who's like the judge. Uh, if you know that Johnny Cash song, you know, you can run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. That's this guy. He's going around and he is cutting shit down. He is just righteous judgment for everybody. And it is awesome, man. It's I love him. So he's the, he's the reason probably I'm still reading this book because I love the presence of a character like that. Uh, Manifest Destiny, I got number four this week because I picked up number three, put it on my list. I think my comic shop guy forgot it. So I got four and I got five this week. And yeah, I love this book. Uh, has a similar sort of almost walking dead feel in that you have this band of uh, characters trying to survive this really hostile world. and But with a little more variety. It's not just zombies. It's... Um, different types of monsters and things you got zombies you got buffalo monsters who want to kill everybody you realize how badass this indian girl actually is who's going with them and and the two characters the lewis and clark like they're really cool guys and fun guys to follow like they're serious adventurers and it really captures sort of that pioneer spirit where even though it's so dangerous and so rough they just want to keep moving forward and they're clearly very brave and heroes you want to root for uh amongst like all these sort of people who are following them and maybe a little bit nervous and just want to leave and go home they want to keep trekking forward so i didn't read the first issue so i even know why they want this girl so bad they she's kind of with them and going to be their guide or whatever but uh awesome last page of uh this one guys as they're going to track down those uh you know how the they're kind of like the swamp thing zombies they're like plant zombies who take over everybody and they're going to go just burn everybody down. And turns out they bit off a little more they can chew as they show up. So uh, excited to see where that's going to go. Loving this series. This number one of this series, guys, is going for like 30 bucks on eBay. I know because I paid that. I paid $30 to get number one first print of this. I'm an idiot. I don't know why I did, but I really like it. 
and I'd like to get the whole series. So hopefully make a good move. It goes walking dead and worth 500 bucks, and I can brag to everybody I bought it at 30. Uh, Ninja Turtles, number 32. Uh, big fight scene. Leo is back. Uh, this raven guy is coming to attack them. Leo puts a sweet ninja star in his his gullet there and uh, pulls it out. He has to limp away. Um, but yeah, a lot of fun. Good times, turtle style. Sweet motorcycles. Different crazy moves happening. Not just sort of your standard fighting, which is the stuff I like. Um, art looks pretty good. Guys, I'm not going to lie, this is on the chopping block for me. I think this might even be my last issue. It's $3.99. Uh, I've really enjoyed my run I've had on it. I just feel like I'm ready to move on. Uh, I'm a bit hesitant because this is the book that got me back into comics. Like my friend was reading The Turtles. He said it was really good, the new series, and I should check it out. And I did, and I ordered like the first 15 issues, read all those, and I've been following ever since. So... I'm hesitant because I've read so many, but I think I'm just done. At $3.99, there's so much good stuff out there. Not everything can stay. And for me, it's not bringing it hard enough. Uh, I would have really liked to see Leo kill this guy and see how messed up he's been. But they didn't go that way. They kind of just brought him back. And he he's sort of normal and back to being Leo again and part of the team and all that. So the team is sort of healed, I guess, from this time in the farm, getting away from the city and yeah they're going back to the city so not really too much of consequence happens uh bam invincible 109 love this book guys love it so much hate that not everybody reads it i think everybody should get this book every month because it is like one of my favorites what i want to know from you guys if you've ever tried to read it and not had interest is it because maybe you didn't pick it up from the beginning i want to know if if this book is as good if you haven't read it from the beginning because I've read every issue so actually I haven't I've missed like 10 issues in the middle kind of like 90 or five issues somewhere in there but I love it and I've read most of it so I don't know if you need to read it all to really get the how great it is if because he reaches back and you know these characters you know them in depth from earlier stories and if you don't know those early stories maybe the story the current stories aren't as powerful like a uh, bit of a spoiler here heads up but robot who has been like a longtime friend of invincible from the beginning he was kind of they were on like the teen titans the invincible version of the teen titans team together um they were buddies and he's always been there to help him it looks like he's going to help him but he he turns on him strands him in this alternate dimension uh and murders a couple people and goes back and is ready to take over the earth back home so he's gone total villain so that is awesome to me guys like that's huge this is genius writing it's beautiful writing how he solves his problem here in the other dimension to get out is genius you see some old characters who you haven't seen in a while and um it's just great how he writes and where the stories go and stuff so if you guys aren't reading this like i can't plug it enough man it's so good uh, it's really at its core it's all about mark and understanding what it is to be a superhero and have all this power and how like a young teenager he's like 20 something now uh becomes a man but with that much power and that much responsibility um uh, for the earth and how he deals with his morality and family and his life and everybody around them and guilt and all that stuff so so good guys it's so good so check her out if you're not reading it. And uh, Ryan Otley, I think, is a pretty solid artist. Um, he brings a lot of fun. They do a lot of sweet stuff with, like, the text. I love when they do big, like, kaboom-type text all over the place. It's very, like, old-school comic booky in that sense. Um, but, yeah, just awesome book, guys. I can't plug in enough. And this current story arc's really good. The next, he's kind of, I'll tell you right now, spoiler again, He's escaped that alternate dimension going back to face Robot, who is has murderous intent to kind of take over the world. So, And if anybody, he has the power to do it because of where his role is. He's kind of in charge of all the... He's kind of in charge of the Justice League type group, Guardians of the Earth, I think it's called. Um, and he organizes all them and takes over. So he is in the 
absolute perfect place to go in and take over the world. And he's a hyper genius. So check it out, guys, because it's a great place to jump on next month. Tell your comic book guy I want Invincible. And it's $2.99. It's $2.99. It's always been $2.99. Got to support it. So that's it, guys. Cheers. Make sure you keep drinking, guys, because, you know, drinking makes life better in all ways. Gonna find my baby, gonna hold her tight, gonna grab some afternoon delight. My motto's always been when it's right, it's right. Why wait until the middle of a cold, dark night? When everything's a little clearer in the light of day. And we know the night is always gonna be here anyway.